This is Taiwan. A tiny island nation in the South China Sea, which is actually not considered as a nation by most of the countries. Still, Taiwan is one of the Asian tiger economies, and one of the richest countries in Asia, with GDP per capita of more than $25,000. The interesting thing here is, Taiwan has been achieving this growth by embracing technology. Today the country is a leading manufacturer of chips, electronic components, and specifically semiconductors. Well I am sure that you all have heard about semiconductors. Nowadays semiconductors have become a very important part of our lives. From consumer electronics such as mobile phones and computers, to the ATMs, automobiles, and medical equipment, semiconductors are used everywhere. In fact, the device you are watching this video on, probably has a made in Taiwan chip in it. These chips are new industrial trends and will define the future technologies. That's why many people are saying, the semiconductor is oil of the 21st century. And Taiwan is the unmatched leader of this industry, with the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company alone accounting for more than 50% of the global market. This industry is responsible for 15% of Taiwan's GDP. In 2020, Taiwan Semiconductor production increased to more than 20%, which is nearly $107 billion. This has made the world dependent on Taiwan more than any other nation. You might be knowing how the recent shortage of these chips disrupted manufacturing of many products, and resulted in price hikes of cars, mobile phones, and other products. It really showed us how much the world is dependent on this tiny island. You see, Taiwan was not used to being rich as it is today. It has struggled a lot historically. Taiwan was formed after the civil war in China, between the communists and Kuomintang. Communists won that battle and the Kuomintang formed their government on the island of Taiwan, with the official name, Republic of China. In the beginning, Taiwan was mostly dependent on agriculture, and it was under martial law and no real economic growth happened in the early period. It all started to change in the early 60s. After the reforms of the agriculture sector, Taiwan was slowly moving towards industrialization. Taiwan's initial industrialization was started by the growth of textile factories and companies that produced light manufacturers, such as small appliances, footwear, and athletic equipment. But at the same time, Japanese manufacturing companies were looking out for shifting their manufacturing out of Japan because of rising labor costs in the country. Taiwan grabbed this opportunity, and the economic policy of Taiwan changed to pursue export expansion. Companies subsequently moved to manufacture semiconductors and electronic equipment, including radios, television sets, and computers. By the mid-1980s, Taiwan had become one of the largest producers of computers and computer peripherals, it also succeeded in establishing steel and shipbuilding industries, but those were of less significance than the enterprise's manufacturing information and communication technology products. Taiwan got a head start of more than one decade before China opened its economy, and became the favorite destination for global manufacturing. But Taiwan didn't just stop at labor-intensive industries, they also built their own multi-billion dollar companies like TSMS, MediaTek, Asus, Acer, Winston and many more. The reason behind Taiwan's growth is not only because the nation was in the right place at the right time, and filled the gap of the slowing Japanese manufacturing. But it was mainly the people of the nation. When Taiwan was formed after the civil war in China, many intellectuals and highly educated people came to Taiwan due to the communist rule in China. And this was the real asset for Taiwan. Now with all the advancement and technical revolution, Taiwan still struggles with plenty of problems. And these problems are kind of different from what we usually see. As you know, Taiwan is heavily dependent on trade for its economic growth, but the problem here is, how somebody can trade with nobody. I know some of you were surprised when I said most of the nations do not recognize Taiwan as a country. In fact, only a few countries like Guatemala, Paraguay, and Vatican City accept Taiwan as a country. Above this China claims the entire Taiwan as its own territory, and that makes it hard for Taiwan to trade on a global level. That's why they are so reliant on technical manufacturing, as it is hard to replace by some other nations. Most nations including the US, France, and the UK do not recognize Taiwan as a country due to China, as they don't want to lose access to a country with the second largest economy, and one of the biggest domestic markets. Now even though China is one of the biggest trading partners of Taiwan, it is always under the threat of invasion by the Chinese military. And recently the two nations were a lot in news because of rising geopolitical tension between them. So this atmosphere really affects the foreign investments in Taiwan. So at the end, we have to understand that these problems are not there from today. 
Even with all the challenges in place, Taiwan has managed to achieve an amazing economic growth till now, and it will continue to surprise us further. On that note, we would like to know your opinions on this video. Tell us in the comments below. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you.